women do not dress for men. <laughs> Y'all look good. Oh, we are moving into places and positions of power and leadership, and it is happening. And I have a wish. I am old enough to make this wish. I'm 60 years old. OK, I'm 52. But if you say 60, you get more compliments. <laughs> My wish is that as you move up and you take these positions of power and authority and lead other women, that you not treat them the way we were treated along the way. <laughs> that you lead with love and joy and laughter and happiness. The space between life and laughter is happiness. I cannot tell you how to be happy. As in fact, the only person I can change is myself. And most days, I don't even do that good of a job. <laughs> but I can give you the research, because I'm a sociologist. <laughs> we got research. They spent a million dollars to find that when people were happy on their jobs, they were most productive. I shared those findings with my mom, who was 87 at the time. She said, I bet if they split that million with the people they studied, they'd be real productive. <laughs> There is a lot of research out there, and I'm going to share some of that with you. But before I do, I always like to start doing whatever I do by offering a meditation. I meditate publicly in the form of music, because music is the most parsimonious language. Parsimony is a $3 word that simply means it says the most in the least amount of space. The only other language that does it better is Ebonics, because <laughs> it be that way sometime. <laughs> I've been singing this song for 10 years. It talks about in order to change the world, we have to change ourselves. The difficulty with that, especially as women, is that we take ourselves for granted. You do 29,000 things and think nothing of it. I travel a lot. I'm on a plane all the time. I thought nothing of flying. I'd get on the plane, get off, until one year the engine was struck by lightning. That will make you grateful. <laughs> the pilot did a brilliant job of calming everybody down. He said, don't worry. Look out the window. You see all those ambulances there for you. Now, this happened to be the time of year when I do an annual fast. I fast every year for 40 days, 40 nights. I don't eat anything. I drink water, juices, grueling. I do not recommend it. I usually cheat on the 29th day. <laughs> Except I no longer call it cheating. I call it communion. <laughs> Last year, I knew I was wrong because I was in the kitchen going, Jesus, your body needs butter. <laughs> See, I'm so happy you can laugh at that. Some people cannot. You know those people who are so spiritually minded, they're no earthly good? <laughs> How you doing? I am blessed and highly favored. <laughs> well, maybe you should tell your face. Because <laughs> I have one of these friends, she's so serious. Nothing is funny to her. You can go to a comedy movie and laugh out loud. And she goes, shh, you need to be quiet. It's a comedy. <laughs> There's nothing funny. I told her about the fasting thing. She said, I can't believe you're making fun of the Holy Communion. I said, you never fasted. Have you ever noticed that people who do not do the things that you're willing to do always want to criticize the way you do them? Yes. Ah. I said, you've never fasted. I can tell, because you, you, if you had, you'd know that on the fifth day, you see Jesus, and he's holding a biscuit. <laughs> anyway, I'm on this fast. I'm on the 32nd day of the fast. The plane struck by lightning. It's going down quickly. 32 days of fasting. You'd think I'd call everyone together to pray, to meditate, to hum, something. 32 days of fasting, my first thought was not let us pray. I was thinking, I should have ate. <laughs> Life is not short. In fact, it's rather long. We shorten it with our anger, our frustration, and our resentment, and our inability to forgive. Forgiveness is not about letting somebody else off the hook. It's about getting off the one they tried to put you on. And when we let go, when we laugh, when we love, when we're free, we can sing from our heart. There's God-like and war-like and strong like only some show. And there are sad like, mad like, and half like we know but by my life be a spirit. And by my heart be a woman. And by my eyes be I open, and by my hands be I whole, whole, whole. You loving ones, you are the chosen ones, 
But I hope you choose this journey well, though you strive hard. Sometimes you fall a prey to the lies the angry, jealous people tell. But by your life be you spirit, and by your heart be you human. And by your eyes be you open, and by your work be we free. Stop, I only got 12, 11.54 to go, stop. <laughs> no, but you can laugh, you can keep laughing, you can keep laughing, you do whatever you wanna do. Okay, here's the thing. In my life, I've had, I didn't, I had to learn to be funny. Funny doesn't just come to you. I'm from a long line of women who suffered rape and incest and abuse and neglect and abandonment and go figure, I had an attitude. <laughs> Bigger the insecurity, the bigger the attitude, but there's always somebody in your life to guide you out of that. I had this amazing librarian, Atlanta Brown, who would always slip me books. She would sneak them to me because I had this attitude and I didn't want to look like a book person. I was like, mm, get away from me. Then I'd go sneak in a corner and read. She'd always give me these books by and about African-American authors. And I'd read the books and one day I got up the nerve to ask Ms. Brown the most important question. I said, Ms. Brown, you got any happy black books? <laughs> Miss Brown had the look of the oracle from the movie The Matrix. Like I was Neo and she had been searching for me. She's like, why yes, I do. She grabbed the book, dropped it, it fell to the page that she wanted me to find. She said, read that. It was Langston Hughes, Scarred and Battered. I've been scarred and battered, my hopes the wind and scattered, snowed and freeze me, sunned and baked me. Looks like tween them, they trying to make me. Stop living, stop laughing, stop loving, but I don't care, cause I'm still here. I said, Miss Brown, that's so beautiful. Where's the happy part? <laughs> she said that last line, I'm still here. It's up to you to figure out what to do with the fact that you are still here. So I saw it. And I decided I was going to go to college. That must have been a happy place because nobody in my family had been. <laughs> so I, with the help of amazing people, I got into college. I graduated with honors. I won the President's Cup for Leadership. I called my family. I said, I'm going to graduate school. They said, we thought you already graduated. <laughs> I didn't know nine hours was a full load, so I took 18, finished my master's in two semesters, maintained my 4.0, and got my PhD at 26. Had I listened to the people, thank you, who said, you can't do this, you don't belong here, I wouldn't be in this room, but you wouldn't be here either. Everybody here has had to go through something, over something, and somebody said, you don't belong here. And we know within ourselves we belong wherever we decide to be. I still wasn't funny. I started teaching, and I knew all this stuff, and I learned all these things, and I was brilliant. And I wanted my students to be inspired to change. And I taught this lesson that was so great, that was so powerful, that was so incredible. And at the end, somebody raised their hand and said, and I said, yes, yes, seeker, what is it? <laughs> and they said, and how much of this is going to be on a test? <laughs> I'm like, seriously? But it occurred to me that if I really wanted to touch their minds, I had to touch their heart. So I started researching, because that's what I knew, to find a way to do that. And I fell on this line that said, if something is interesting, funny, or bizarre, poor people are more likely to remember, to learn, and to change. Wow, I had bizarre and interesting down. <laughs> so I had to learn to be funny. But how did I learn to be funny when my mother's humor was when we didn't have something to eat? She'd say, oh, tonight we having poke rolls and grits. Poke your mouth out, roll your eyes, and grit your teeth, because that's all you're getting. <laughs> That ain't funny. <laughs> Actually, it was. It was brilliant. It was clever. I had to tap back into that kind of humor. Then I found something by Alice Walker. She said, there's a point at which even grief becomes absurd. At that point, laughter gushes up to retrieve the sanity. 
I needed that sanity, that sanity retrieving kind of humor, and I found it through happiness. Here's what the research says. In fact, we've studied depression for hundreds of years. We've studied happiness for like five. <laughs> happy people are more productive, more creative, they're healthier, they live longer. Why don't we seek to be happy? Two roads in life, one is internal, one is external. The external says seek wealth, seek image, seek, seek status. The internal, and, and if you seek those things, which are good, they're great, wealth, image, status, how much do I have, what is my ranking, and how do I look? Those are good, but they don't tend to provide happiness. In fact, the constant pursuit of those things will make you unhappy. But if on the internal side, you look for personal growth, building your relationships and community involvement, not only will it make you happy, but it illuminates a pathway for others to follow. Here's the only formula that works in life. E equals MC squared. Energy is matter that's been liberated once the speed of light times itself blows on it. It's our job to be the speed of light times itself blowing on what matters in people's lives so that we can change it into energy. Personal growth, I had to work on myself. I worked on myself, I thought it was about my physical self. I, I lost 150 pounds, which was amazing because I'd been a vegetarian all my life. Where'd the weight come from? I was taking everybody else's stress. I learned to stop, to eat, to breathe, to move, and love myself. But that wasn't enough. The universe said we need more. There's an ancient Arabic proverb that says when a person seeks their purpose, the universe conspires the answer. Mine came in a crazy way. I hit my head. Got a concussion that went untreated earlier this year. It's left me with post-concussion disorder. I have high-pitched ringing in my left ear that never stops. I get migraines on a regular basis. Sometimes I feel like I can't even move, and I thought, why me? I went to a specialist, and he, I said, fix it. He said, we can't. The brain has to heal itself. It's going to take a long while for you. It's got to reboot. I said, oh, I looked at him like this. He said, what are you doing? I said, I'm deleting files. <laughs> I thought, what can I do? I live in my head, and I could hear my mother from the other side saying, move to your heart. Well, I was praying for love. I felt that someone should come into my life and love me. My mother called and said, my sister's three children were in danger of going into foster care. They'd all been born crack addicted. I had to take them. I called a friend, said, I was praying for love. I'm getting children. What happened? <laughs> she said, with God, you need to be more specific. <laughs> I prayed again, hey, God, a man. <laughs> And that's how I got the country song. So, and, and I told you, I have five kids. I got three from my sister. But you know when you do a good job with something, people don't take responsibility away. They give you more. That's how I got the five. They just started dropping them off. <laughs> and my children, my youngest son was diagnosed as being autistic. We found out he's just odd. He didn't, he didn't speak until he was six. It was right after we saw The Lion King. Yeah, now he talks like James Earl Jones. <laughs> But they've taught me to look at the world in this beautiful, round, wonderful way. Community involvement. My children get me out on a Sunday morning and say, we got to go do something for somebody else. My sister and manager, Janine, we co-owned an art gallery. We used all the proceeds to help families in need. I know it sounds like a really noble thing. We just got tired of them living with us. Whenever we get a family moved into a home, we ask them to come back on moving day to help another family get in. That circle of gratitude completes the wellness. One day, Janine called and said, the funniest thing just happened. I said, what happened? She said, one of the mothers came in, and her teeth were sticking way out. She walked in the door and said, help me. Something not right. And Janine said, what happened? What did you do? She said, I don't know. I woke up this morning. Something not right. It took her an hour to figure out that this woman had accidentally put on her husband's dentures. <laughs> we laughed, just like you're doing, right? But you know how you want to share your laughter with people who don't know how to laugh. So you're sharing it out. And we got two sets of friends, the people who can laugh and the people who can't. And I learned that the difference between that laughter and you can't is the ones who were there to do the work, the setup. If you're not there to do the setup, you don't get the joke. So I call one of these people who come to the party after everything's done, and I'm telling her, and then the teeth and the son and the husband's and the son's not right. It's like a cell phone commercial. Hello. What? I heard you. I heard you. I said, what, 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 isn't it funny? No, I can't believe you're laughing at the very people you claim you're supposed to be helping. I hung up and laughed at her. <laughs> not only did I laugh, we now use it. Whenever things are off in our office, we look at each other and go, something all right. <laughs> Everybody has a something all right. And it's the shortcut.
that we need from the pain to the sanity that needs to be retrieved. You're all like, you're all sitting there going, I'm remembering mine. Oh my God, I did. <laughs> Okay, I gotta leave you with something um, that my mom gave to me. I gave you the research, what it says, move to the left, move to the left, move to the left. On the right, there is wealth, status, and image. On the left, there's personal growth, relationships, and community involvement. And here's my mom's gift to you. On the day she died, my mom was an amazing woman, and, and she taught me how to forgive, which is really amazing, because she was the one I had to forgive second most. <laughs> me was first, because I had to forgive myself for holding on to that pain for so long. And on the day she died, she said, I've been laying here trying to figure out what to give you. I said, Mom, stop it. You don't have to give me anything, and you're not going anywhere. And she said, oh, it's time. It's time. I said, no, you're not going anywhere. She'd been sick for two years. She had a brain tumor, five heart attacks, six strokes. When this two-year period, never in neurological damage, she'd remember everything. She said, I've been laying here trying to figure out what to give you. I know what to give you, and I want you to share it with the people who do the work. I said, what are you talking about? I don't have any money, live with you 20 years. All the good jewelry I have you gave me, I don't think it'd be right to give it back. <laughs> I said, yes, it would. She said, I know what to give you. And when you go out to speak to those who do more for everybody than they do for themselves, I want you to share this with them. I said, Mom, stop. She said, I'm going to take all of the generational baggage, the hurt, the shame, the stuff that happened to me, my mother, her mother, her mother before. I'm packing it up and I'm taking it with me to the other side. I'm leaving you a clean slate. When you go out to talk to those who do more for others than they do for themselves, let them know that me and the ancestors didn't give them a clean slate. Sisters, we are going to change the world. And by the way, there's a brother who's going to be here later on today who's already doing it. And you're doing it. Do it with love. Do it with laughter. Do it with joy. Do it with kindness. Don't haze these young women the way we were hazed. Lead them in love. And we're going to find the way to our truth. Thank you.